My main photography project this spring is backlighting. I absolutely love the effect, the way the light comes through the wings and the tail of a bird, and it can highlight the overall shape really well. So my vision is to capture the drama of this lighting effect by shooting birds in flight. For these images to work, I need two things. I need to be able to shoot into the light, and I also need a nice dark background. And I think this lake close to home will do the job. There's quite a steep distant hillside, and there's also some trees close to the water. There's an abundance of ducks and geese here, and also quite a few herons, egrets, and also some cormorants. The wind direction is really important here as well, so I really want the wind coming from behind me. Birds are much more likely to take off and land into the wind, so if they do that here, it means I'm going to get them flying towards me. The exposure when you're trying to backlight like this can be really tricky, and I tend to make use of the histogram a lot in these situations. So what I'll be aiming for here with my histogram, if I'm shooting it against a dark background, which I usually am, is to have a big peak on the left-hand side of the histogram, uh, that's going to be your background, and then the highlights, which will be where the light's coming through the bird's wings and tail, that'll be very close to the end of the histogram, the right-hand side, and ideally not blown out. Oh my god, it's like everything is going away from me. Every single thing is just going in the wrong direction. Just had a flock of mallards there, well, it was a small group, I think there was about four of them, and they just flew around in a circle a few times, and I thought they were going to drop kind of into that spot that I wanted, but they just didn't do it. Um, it just always stayed a bit too high. Or well, how much better do I feel after that? There's a couple of geese that just flew in in a good position. And what are the odds that they decided to do it as I was changing my battery on the vlogging camera? Unbelievable. And I could hear them calling. They sounded like they were in flight and I thought there's gonna be an opportunity here. So I just quickly looked for somewhere to put the camera. I put it down on a fence post and I tracked them in and they kind of went in that, in that window that I'm after with the, the dark background of the shaded trees and the reflections of the water is quite dark as well. Tracked them in, got a few shots and I think I got some splash in as well, hopefully, fingers crossed. It is the 24th of March today and I'm back here again at the same spot. But this morning there's actually a lot more cloud than I've had before. I'm really not getting many opportunities today. There's very little that's been flying against that dark background, but there is a lot of birds flying high against the sky. Now, it's always good to practice, particularly with flight photography, and I do like a good silhouette. I'm getting various ducks, the grey lag geese, and also a nice pair of oyster catchers, which is something a little different. Now, the light is quite changeable today. That's partly because of the cloud. So I'm using aperture priority with auto ISO, and just basically setting a wide aperture. I get a cormorant flyby in front of some quite attractive cloud. Now when I take the picture and then look on the back of the screen and zoom in, I see that there's actually some light coming through the wings. Now shooting against the sky for backlighting generally isn't going to work, but if you've got some cloud then it can work as it did here. So again I'm still shooting into the light, because I've got some fairly dark clouds it's actually allowing that light in the wings to come through. It's the 29th of March today, and I've decided to shift my position. So I'm gonna go down to the right-hand side of the lake. I think it might give better backgrounds here. I've also got a nice view of the top of a grassy bank.
One of the most important pieces of kits for backlighting is of course your lens hood. So if you're shooting it into the light, I'd always advise to put the lens hood on and avoid flare. I'm constantly looking at these backgrounds and thinking how good it's going to look if a bird flies in the perfect position. A grey lag goose takes off and catches the light and I know it's far away but I take a shot anyway. This is partly just as practice and to see how the light is all working together. This is much more of what I'm after but I need everything to be closer. But at least I'm on the right track. I know I can get these images, I just have to keep going. I've been watching activity on a river that's very nearby and I think this could be a much better spot. It ticks all the boxes and there's a lot of ducks coming and going. Oh, there's so much going on. Wow, there's so much going on. The conditions this morning are just stunning. There's ducks flying around everywhere. Um, this is the, the first time I've ever been down here uh, with mist in the morning, first time, it's absolutely beautiful and just those spring colours coming through the mist as well with the buds and some of the leaves unfolding, it is just absolutely gorgeous. The light here is wonderful, mostly backlit but also some mist just rising against that dark riverbank, absolutely perfect. I watch as the ducks start to come into land, again with the wind largely behind me. I think the water could be a problem here and I really need the birds to fly higher against that background. I know it's simply a matter of being patient. Mist at sunrise is definitely one of my favourite things, but it can be a difficult exposure situation. So earlier on, whilst we've still got quite a bit of mist in the air, I use Aperture Priority with Auto ISO to help cope with the changing lighting conditions, and I also add some underexposure for the highlights. A male gadwall flies towards me, coming into land. I get on the bird, I lock on and fire. This is definitely the best photo from this session. After about an hour, the mist completely clears and I now switch to using fully manual exposure. A pair of swans float by and one begins to bathe. I'm shooting at an angle here, kind of half backlit, half side lit. The light is also much stronger by now and it's harder to control the exposure. I've actually blown out some of the whites when I look at the resulting images, but I quite like the effect. That overexposure and the swishing of the wings maybe just helps to add to the drama. Strong side lighting is really difficult and it's probably one of my least favourite types of light, but if the sun is a little bit diffused and you're able to control the exposure, then you can get some quite nice results. 14th of April today, I think it is, and I'm rather annoyed with myself, if I'm honest, because I made a rookie mistake this morning, um, in that this, it looks quite good now, and it is, but when I woke up there was a lot of cloud, it wasn't quite the forecast they said. There was a load of cloud and I was trying to second guess the weather and uh, just thought there's no point going out when it's this, this cloudy and rubbish and of course it quickly cleared up and now there's a lot of blue sky and the sun's clear so it's perfect for backlighting. So I left a lot later than I should. Um, a little bit annoyed with myself but you know, we're all human. Wow. 
So this is a slightly different spot now. Basically, I just got a little bit closer to the action, but also lower down. And that's really important, the lower down bit, um, largely because of the backgrounds. Because before when I was higher up, um, I was kind of looking towards the water more and I don't want the water in the backgrounds I want the uh, the distant trees as my backdrop because the water is going to reflect light the the trees are just going to be much more of a simple dark background the sky is completely clear around the Sun and there's no mist at all so I go straight to using fully manual exposure now the way I look at this as I'm looking towards my dark background I'll aim to under expose considerably from what the camera's meter says so this will usually be somewhere between probably minus one and minus two on my exposure meter. And then I'll try to use any highlights that I can find as a guide for the bird. So this can be difficult at times, but if you're shooting around water, then you could use uh, ripples on the water or any splashes, for example. That can just give you a bit of a guide as to a similar exposure for the highlights of the bird. I'm getting very few opportunities this morning and I think I may have actually got a little bit too close, maybe disturbing these ducks. I get one male mallard which flies into a nice position towards me. I managed to just catch him before he's out of frame, nicely backlit against that dark riverbank. Then a lot of my opportunities afterwards just seem to be more side lit just due to the angle of where the birds are. Now when a duck is in the right position with a good background it can work quite well. You get some really nice interesting lighting effects, something a little bit different from the norm. But sometimes there's just simply too much contrast and I find it can be difficult to expose and control the whites. I started out with a clear vision of the types of images that I wanted, but ultimately I learned much more about the play of light and even some of the side lit shots were quite pleasing to me, which I really didn't expect. One thing's for sure, you never stop learning about light. Now I really, really enjoy making this style of video and if you like this type of content then maybe try the video that's up on the screen now which is me trying to photograph geese in mist, another project style video over quite a few sessions. Thanks very much for watching, if you're not subscribed please do subscribe to my channel, I'll see you in the next video.